Here we go, y'all. Let's draw this horn of plenty. I know it looks complicated, but you can do this. The first thing we're gonna do, so I want you to go over a little further than half, and that's where we're gonna make this C. So it's a big, wide C that just runs flat at the bottom. All right, got it? Then we're gonna start building this. I know it looks very complicated, but it's, it's not that bad. We're gonna, first let's make our apple. So our apple is almost like you're making a heart, but it's very wide. And then here at the bottom, we just make a wiggly line. So that's our apple. And then we can give it a little stem. And then we can give it two leaves. So there's one leaf. And then let's make another leaf. And we'll put that little line in the middle of both of them. So now we've got our apple. And then behind that, we can add our pear. So let's start at this C and we're gonna curve in, go up and around and come down and curve out. And then our pear can have a stem and you can decide whether you wanna put a leaf on that stem or not. Next, we're gonna work on our grapes. So, grapes are a lot of circles. I'm going to be painting mine with watercolor. So I'm bearing that in mind when I make my grapes sort of big. These are gigantic grapes of celebration. And I'm going to make a lot of circles all stacked up on one another like this. And I'm going to take these up a little bit taller then my pear and here up toward the center I'm going to start overlapping grapes like these are really far behind the other ones so we're not going to see the whole circle of all of these grapes so we can start like this and then once we have those grapes done, I know it looks like they're just hanging in the middle of nowhere, but they're gonna be, there's gonna be a pumpkin behind it. We can add our little grape leaf, which is kind of like, it has three pieces on it, and then we'll put the little leaf lines. So that is our grape leaf. And behind these grapes, we're going to add a pumpkin, but we don't put just a whole lot of detail because that pumpkin is covered up by a lot of our fruit. So the first thing we'll do is this middle section of the pumpkin. And it's behind everything. So we can't really, we can't see it. We don't need the bottom. But then we'll put some sides on the pumpkin like this. So it's going to look like it's behind everything here. Perfect. So that's the rest of our pumpkin. And then our pumpkin can also come it would be here, but since we don't see any of that, we come on down and it would be here, but we don't see any of that. So we come on down and then we have one more little piece of pumpkin. And then our pumpkin needs a little stem. So it's gonna be here. It's gonna have a little raggedy top and come down. And we can go ahead and put some of those little lines in it. This is going to look so great when we get color into it. I'm very excited. All right. Next, let's add an ear of corn. Now the corn I'm going to add behind here and I'm going to make it still be in its pretty little leafy corn husk. So I'm going to make some, it almost looks like eels coming up from behind the rest of my, <laughs> the rest of my fruit. Um, but it's corn, rest assured. And then I'll put one more leaf here of corn husk. And then we can make our rounded ear of corn in there. And it'll look like corn when we put color in it that's corn. But if you want to, you can always do like the little corn kernels. 
and you can just make a lot of rows. I am probably going to uh, try and just handle this with paint, but this is how you put that texture in if you want to add it to your drawing. So there's your little, all of your corn kernels. When I'm working in this black marker, hopefully you're working in pencil, um, and when you paint yours or you color it in, you won't have these heavy black lines. But that's going to make it look significantly nicer if you don't. And then uh, you can make it at the top. All right, so that's our corn. Then let's put another little leaf back here behind these grapes. So it's just a leaf. We're building layers, building, building, and building. All right, next we're gonna add some sheaths of wheat that are coming out the top. Now, we wanna fill this thing up. So I'm gonna just add some lines that come from back here and end somewhere up there. And we're going to fill this whole section. There we go. So we can add as many of those as we need to. And we're going to make sure that we don't come in front of any of this stuff here. Let me turn my paper. It's a little easier this way, I think. Oh, I think I just drew over my corn. Oh, well, it'll be all right. So all these little wheat sheaths that are coming up from here, on each of these lines I drew, I'm going to add at the end here, just these little curly shapes. And then when we come to paint this, um, it's all kind of gonna run together and it'll be lovely. And you can make these go down as low as you want or you can start them up higher. So they just look like that. And all this orange behind it is so that you have a better idea of what I am going to draw. I want you to have some reference in there. Hey puppy. My dog's having a little bit of a dream where she's talking. All right, so we can put as much or as little detail in here on these as we want because we can always add more detail later when we bring in paint, right? I simply want it to look nice and jumbly up there. I want it to look very full. It's a horn of plenty, so I want it to look full of plenty of stuff. And you can kind of just fill in that background with whatever shapes and colors you think look good there. I'm going to add a couple more leaves. So what I'm going to do is make the inside of the leaf first. And then I'm gonna just gonna zigzag and make a real shaky line around that leaf. And there's a leaf. And we'll do that one more time, but with the center of the leaf coming down this way. Here we go. And then we'll make our little funky shaky lines around it. So we have finished making all of the plenty. Now we're gonna make the horn. Where your C starts here, you're going to make a loop. And then we're going to keep making loops going all the way down. And if you want to turn your paper, you can. You can bring them in this way. But this is still kind of a little C shape. So we're going to make those C's go all the way down. And then on this last one, I want to flatten out. So I'm going to come up and just flatten out. And that's the bottom of the cornucopia. So when we look at it this way, that's the lovely little border. And I'm noticing I can still see some cornucopia here. So I'm going to give it one more little piece of wheat. There we go. Now it's completely full. It is the horn of totally the horn of plenty. Now we can add our sections here. So these also are just shaped like 
that C. And we're gonna get smaller and smaller and go upward. So the next one is gonna be a little bit upward. See how that works? And remember also these, I'm thinking, hey, I'm gonna paint these. So I don't wanna make them too small. I wanna make them an enjoyable size for me to paint. And you can add however many sections fit on your paper. I'm gonna, again, turn my paper so that I can see. And I'm gonna start curving these sections upward and getting higher. So I'm starting way high on this one and going up higher. And then my sections are getting smaller, but I'm going higher. <laughs> and then when you get to the top, you can start curling over this way if you want. So there is our Horn of Plenty. Now we can paint it. Um, you can paint it really however you want. I'm gonna have, my horn's gonna be yellow and then all my fruit's gonna be kind of different colors so I have a lot of beautiful color going on in here. So I'll be back to paint. All right, now it's time to paint. And you can start wherever you wanna start painting. I'm starting with this apple. I already have some red over here in my little paint palette, but I'm gonna start with just a nice red apple. And I'm gonna paint it in. Paint those little wavy lines at the bottom. Maybe I'll leave a glare on it over here. It's a very shiny apple. Maybe it'll have some yellow in it too. Be a yellowish red apple. Nothing wrong with that. You can make yours just red. It does not have to be as red and orangey as mine. But you can have fun within each of these little elements of your cornucopia, I think. It's, it's always nice to get some extra depth of color in here. All right, maybe I'll put a little bit more nice deep red in there. It's gonna be next to that pumpkin, so I wanna make sure it's not coming off too orange. I wanna make sure it's really nice and red. So I'm thinking about what I'll paint next. And I don't wanna paint something that's, ah, that was a mess up. All right, I don't wanna paint something that's next to the apple. But let me go grab that little piece that's not supposed to be up there. All right, come back here, you. Oh, we have to just work around our little oopsies, right? It's not the end of the world. It's just a little bit of paint in the wrong place. So I'll be all right. Um, I can even put a little purple in there if I want to. Put some purple over here on the edge of this apple. Give it some extra delicious redness. There we go, I'm happy with that apple. Now I'm gonna paint something that isn't near the apple. Maybe I'll do the grapes. So I'm gonna use, what color? My grapes are gonna be purple, like purples and blues. I have some paint left over from the last thing I painted. So I'm gonna mix right in with that. This was like blue and black. So now it's blue and black and purple. And then I'll have some regular purple. So this is just regular purple, but I'm watering it down a little bit. And then I'll have some red and purple. So red and purple and water. Red. And I'm gonna put a little bit of purple in there. So I have some different colors of purples here. Maybe I'll mix one that is also blue and purple. 
So there's some blue. And then we'll put a little purple in it. Perfect. I might need more blue in that. I said it was perfect, but here I am. Making it different. And what I think I'm gonna do is just pick a grape and paint it. So this grape is gonna be a bluish grape and this grape can be bluish and I will paint each of the grapes a slightly different color. Now we'll have some that are a little purplier. And I'm trying not to paint grapes that are next to each other because why? The paint will run. You already know. All right. Do we have any other grapes that aren't touching any of these friends? Let's see. Oh, let those grapes dry and then I'll come back to it. Now, what can we paint? Let's see. I have these fall leaves that are coming off the side here, so I can paint one of those orange. I'll go a little bit orange on this one. You can mix color in here too if you want to. Oh, my pumpkin's gonna be orange, so I'm gonna have to make sure that I get some other colors in this leaf so it doesn't look like it's part of the pumpkin. Ah! All right. Maybe we'll abandon orange. Maybe we'll go to yellow. Make the inside of this leaf yellow. And then it'll mix with that orange and we'll be fine and can be next to the pumpkin and it won't be exactly the same color. We could also could use brown, but the basket of this is gonna be very yellowish brown. So I was thinking I would not use um, a lot of brown in the stuff that's inside the basket. So I think that looks nice. Now I'm gonna paint something else that's not close to any of this stuff. Oh, I can paint my corn. All right, my corn is gonna have, what has to be green? These are gonna be a lighter green. My corn's gonna be dark green. So let's get, I might mix some green in here too. All right, corn. Your corn husks are going to be green, so I will start painting those. And they're going to be dark green. Oh, or maybe they're, maybe they're light green because this pear, what color are we going to make this pear, y'all? I hadn't thought about it. Okay, I didn't think that far ahead. But I think if I make the corn a light green, maybe with some yellow, then our pear can be like that apple green. And if this doesn't work and it looks awful, I can just always paint over it. It's the beauty of starting light. I can always just paint right over it. So I'm gonna make my leaf, my corn leaf, my corn husk, this green. Oh, maybe with a little tiny bit of brown would work. I'll do green and I'll mix a little tiny bit of brown in there to give it that fall feel. Don't wanna make my corn husk yellow because then it will blend in too much with the wheat sheaths. All right. Uh, what's next? I can't paint that. Uh, I'm not ready for that pumpkin too many things on the other side of the pumpkin are still wet. I'll tell you what, I'll paint a few of the wheat sheaths. And I think my wheat is gonna be kind of a light yellow. And I'll mix a tiny bit of brown in there. So this is yellow and brown. And I am just swooping on up and over. I'm loosely trying to stay where I put um, 
these pencil lines. <laughs> but sometimes I'm, I'm missing a little bit there. And once this dries, I can return and add a little bit of a darker paint over it and give it some uh, detail. Oh, come on, corn. Don't be like that. My corn is bleeding into my wheat sheets. I flew too close to the sun. <sighs> All right, and then I'm gonna come put the little edges of my wheat on there. A little actual grain part of my wheat. And I can do this after more of this dries with a little more detail. And then it'll make more, it'll make more sense and it'll probably actually then look like wheat. But for now, I'm just gonna add these little details and move along. All right, we got that done. I can paint these apple leaves. So I'm gonna go with a lighter yellow green. So I'll mix some yellow in with that green for my apple leaf. Because I want it to be very, very vibrant. Very, I want it to be a different color than the other things that are next to it. So it's a little, it's a little more yellow than the other one. And you don't have to paint this. Don't paint it just because I'm painting it. You can add color any way you'd like. If markers are easier or crayon, it's a great idea. Or colored pencils, any of that works. All right, I can paint this grape leaf. It's gonna be sort of a brownish green. Maybe I'll mix a little bit of purple with green and see what happens. Yeah, it's giving me kind of a gray green. So that'll work for this grape leaf. And if it's not a different color enough, I can just dab a little more of the other color in there. Which I think I will be doing because it's not quite. There we go. All right, that's what I want. I want it to be a grapey green leaf. Sort of looking and thinking, ooh, I can, maybe I can paint a couple more grapes while I'm waiting. Some of these grapes can have a neighbor. Now they're a little drier. And I don't think it matters with the grapes if they kind of bleed into each other. I'm gonna be just absolutely fine with that. I don't remember which colors I used before. Go here if I'm very careful around that leaf. All right, I don't think I have, oh, this one, oh, this one I can do. So those grapes are fun. All right. I'm gonna let all the other ones dry because I'm not not feeling real good about that. All right, next I'm gonna have a yellow leaf right here, but I'm gonna put some maybe some green into it. I'm not gonna touch that grape. Uh, maybe I'll put some of those grapey green in it. Maybe a little bit of yellow orange too, just because why not? All right, there's that leaf. Uh, I think what needs to happen now is I'm gonna have to just go work on the cornucopia for a while. So the basket itself, I'm gonna paint every other section so that I don't have to paint next to something that's wet. But I'm gonna add my water first so my paint will have a boundary line. 
And if you did the pumpkin with me, then you'll know. I'm going to paint every other section. I'm going to skip around. And this is going to be a yellowish brown. So I think I can go straight out of the paint pan and bring in some brown. And then I'll add water to it to lighten it up a little bit. Maybe we need more of you brown. And then we can drop some yellows and some oranges in here to make it a more interesting color. I've seen, the, like in real life, the cornucopias are all different colors. Um, some of them are the straw yellow. Some of them are woven kind of like baskets. You can find them in many different colors. Because really they are a, they are a basket. They're like a woven a woven holder thingy. So they're they're baskets. They just are not traditional basket shape. They're shaped more like a horn. So then I'll add yellow. I'll just drop some yellow in and around and it can do whatever it wants. There we go. And then I'll move on to skip a section and then paint the next next section. I'm gonna put my water down to make sure I set the boundary for my paint. right in here all with water and then I'm gonna grab that brown just like I did last time so I'll get some brown on my brush I'll add the brown to this section and then I'll add some yellow to lighten it up and give it a little golden harvest feeling to it And if you run outside your pencil line, just make that section a little bit bigger. That is how we deal with that. Okay, then I'll bring some yellow. And I'll just dot it here and there and we'll see what happens. And then I'm gonna skip a section and I'll do this one. I'll grab my brown and get it filled up there. And then we'll add a, a little bit of yellow here and there. Skipping around, these sections are getting smaller and smaller. Oh, I forgot to do water first, didn't I? All right, luckily it's a little section. In these little sections, it doesn't matter as much. But in staying with my method that I'm trying to show you, so that's too much water, so I'm gonna go dab some back in the previous section. Can also take some of this water and start working on the next next section because that's plenty. Uh, and then we'll get some yellow and dab it in there and dab some yellow in that one. So, all right, this is my last one on this rotation. I'll put a little more brown in this, these friends.
and I'll put a little yellow in that one and then we are going to let these dry and we'll come back and paint those alternating sections later. What I am looking at is this all this pooling paint here so I'm gonna lift a little bit of it off and then I'm just drying my brush out on my paper towel because I don't want those to leak. I don't want any mishaps. Okay, so I'm gonna flip back over here and say, all right, what has dried that I can paint next to? I think we can paint our, either our pear or our pumpkin now. Let's do this pear. So I think my pear is gonna be, let's see, it's gonna be green, like this lovely green. It's gonna be a bright green pear. And I'm trying to keep this paint a little bit thicker because I don't want it to run into like my corn or my wheat. There we go. And I want to be careful around the apple, of course, because I don't want my pear and apple colors to mix. And if you have an eight color palette, oh, I am, ah, I'm using the 16 color palette, but you can mix green and yellow together to get this brighter green if you are looking for it. And then I'm gonna come drop some different colors into this green as well, like probably some yellow for sure. And this pretty bright green pair. So I'm get a little yellow and I'll add some little yellow spots to this pair and maybe some brown too if I feel like it. So I'll make it a nice bright pair. And I don't want to run over the apple but I just want to paint the edge here. All right, so there's my pair, and these are still a little wet. Uh, let's see, what can we do? We can probably go over the wheat sheet, maybe with, I'm gonna add some brown into this yellow over here. But we can maybe add some contours here. I don't wanna totally paint over it, I want to simply add a little depth with that brown. I want to make sure that it's good and watered down. I'm just going to come from back here and add a little bit of contour and layering. And then we can always go back over these as well. I think the more layering, the more depth on stuff like the wheat sheets, the better because it looks very rich and very golden and very, very nice, very pretty. And I wanna cover up <laughs> some of those pencil lines also. I'm just going to continue layering like that with those leaves. Now I'm going to, we can go and paint these. So that will be next, but I'll have to come back and uh, finish this tutorial with you because I have another class to teach. So uh, this is going to have some time to dry, which is good. And we'll come in and paint the rest of those grapes. We will get our pumpkin and our leaves and our corn and we'll finish out the cornucopia. All right, so this is all completely dry. I am I am back on the next day and I can get in here and start doing some more of these different fruits and vegetables. Um, I think I'm gonna work on the pumpkin. And I'm gonna have, let me see, I'm gonna bring my paint down here so you can see. And I'm gonna use a regular old orange for this pumpkin. 
just plain orange. And I will, I've got to paint around a lot of this stuff that I've already put in, but that's okay, because I can do it. So I'm going to carefully paint all the parts of this pumpkin, which are behind, oops, I kind of painted over that leaf a little bit. Oh well, that's how, that's how it goes sometimes, huh? All right, so I'm going to paint in all the parts of my pumpkin. So it'll be nice and orange. I keep wanting to paint over that section where my stem is on my apple. So I keep having to remind myself that uh, that is the apple, that is not the pumpkin. All right. So then we'll come over here and get around these little grapes, around the apple. And I might put a little bit of the yellow orange in there. Just to make it look a little different than that apple that's so red and orange. And it's going to be a little challenging getting around all these grapes, but that is, that's all right. If it bleeds a little bit in there, then I will, I will do my best to come back and fix it. And once I get all the tough parts done, then I will have fun painting just the easier parts. Sometimes on pieces like this, we may need to paint it over the course of a few days. You can also complete it with marker or something that might be, uh, might feel a little bit easier for you. If you are not up for all of this little tiny painting, which I know everybody isn't, and that is all right. When you're making art for yourself, I think it's important to be able to recognize what you enjoy and what you don't enjoy. And maybe on different days you enjoy different things. Sometimes I do not really want a challenge. I simply want to do the things that I know I enjoy, I know I will be successful at, and I'm in charge of my own art, so I can make those decisions. It's okay to do art that's enjoyable. I had a little splotch there, so I'm trying to reactivate it and just paint that part orange. It's absolutely okay to do something that isn't super challenging. If what you need is easy, simple art that you know you can complete, and painting all these tiny spaces is not going to be that for you today, then grab some markers, grab some colored pencils, and color this in a different way. There's nothing wrong with taking control and making those kinds of choices for yourself. All right, so I think I have all of the, is that all the pumpkin parts? I think that's all the pumpkin parts. All right, and when this dries, I will add my little stem. So now I have some grapes. Some of these grapes are in places that I can get to, so maybe I'll paint some grapes. I can get to this grape. The beautiful thing about the cornucopia is everyone knows what all of these things are. People that are looking at this understand that these are grapes, these are fruit. So if we aren't exactly perfect with everything we do, still gonna look like grapes. Hmm. 
Hmm. What color? Let's use some of this blue. Oh, do I have one that's not touching anything wet? Maybe I don't. All right. I'm not going to get too close to that orange. I don't feel like having a security breach there. All right. And I'll come back later and I can add more color to those grapes. What do we have? We have the corn in here. So we can make our corn. Uh, you can make it yellow. You can make it maroon. It's a lot of different colors of corn. I'm going to just go with yellow. And then I might decide later that I'd like to add some other color to it. I'm going to flip it over. So I can reach that corn a little bit better. So I'm going to go in that little nook right there and just paint the shape of this corn. And I'm adding this yellow layer, but what I'm thinking is I will return momentarily when the yellow dries a little bit. And I will add a little bit of a more orange yellow or a darker yellow on top. And a shape that helps us see the shape of the corn kernels, perhaps. That sounds good. And then the other things I have in here are the leaves in the background and the stem of that pumpkin. Oh, excuse me, it's allergy today outside. All right, let's put a nice, I think I'm gonna put a nice kind of a reddish orange leaf back here. So I'll paint it red first, and then I'll add some orange to it. I think that'll be really nice. I'm leaving some room for that stem. Painting the outside boundary. Adding my red. There's one more little piece right here that needs to be red. And then I can put some yellow or orange, or whatever fall color I feel like. Maybe I'll put some of this, some of this purpley color. I'm trying to think of what colors I don't have around this leaf. And then I will put a tiny bit of orange just on the tips of those leaves and we'll see what happens as that paint moves around through my little leaf. Then I can come and add some more color to my grapes, maybe. Let's do that. While I'm up here on the top edge of my grapes, I'll get this top grape painted in. I like that. Uh, maybe this one as well. What else do I have? Now I feel a little more comfortable adding. All right, so while you were <laughs> while you were away, I painted the stems. So I did my apple stem and my pear stem, and they are brown with a little bit of gray in them. I'm gonna wait on that pumpkin stem, but for now, we can go back and do those in between sections that we didn't get to on the lid of the basket. Since you already know that technique, I'm going to record this one in time lapse.
All right, so I finished the cornucopia part. Now I'm going in for that pumpkin stem. Pumpkin stem, it's time for you. I'm gonna use some brown. I need more water in my brown. All right, so I'm gonna use this brown right here on this pumpkin stem. I'm gonna try to stay a little bit away from that leaf. Run just over the contour of that pumpkin and add my little stem in here. There we go. And then once this part of the brown is dried, I can return and add some kind of some detail to it. Now I'm just going to put some leafy veins in here. I can put some on this one too. These are very light little details. We can put maybe I'll put one on the grape leaf too. And our apple. you can see those are minor minor details all right corn what are we gonna do with you corn corn i think i'm gonna get some like yellowish yellow orange some pretty light yellow orange and I'm going to just put some little detail on this corn. And it doesn't really matter if it looks precisely like corn. Because we know. We know it's corn. And I think on the corn husks, I might also put a little bit of just yellow. Maybe yellowish brown on those corn husks to make them a little more stripy. I forgot I had another leaf of corn husk back here, but I'm just gonna paint it this yellow. And we will let people decide exactly what they're looking at there. What else do we need to do? I need a little bit more brown layering in this wheat. So I will add that on. A little more through here. And then I'll simply fill this space in. And I will let my viewer's eye decide exactly what it's looking at there. But I want these wheat sheets to kind of be very filling in this space. So I think I'm almost done. I'm gonna add, what color do I wanna use? I'll just use brown. Maybe I'll mix it with a little bit of this purple to make it a darker brown. I'll add some detail to that pumpkin's stem. And I think that we're done. You can always add more detail. Maybe I'll give this leaf some detail. You can always add more detail wherever you want, but I think, <sighs> I think this is a great stopping point. I may go in and add some more um, texture on the basket part, but for now, this is a great stopping point. If I do more things, um, I'll just do those in time lapse because I'm probably going to take a lot of time thinking about what I'm going to do, and that would make this tutorial really, really long. So just work on what you've got, and I will be back with my finished product after a little bit of time travel.
All right, so you can see I added a lot of, I just did a lot of layering on the basket to get some of that texture. And I think I'm all through, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign. I hope that you're enjoying this. Know that I absolutely don't expect anybody to finish this in the time of the tutorial, of course, but I hope that you're enjoying it. And if you don't like the areas that you've shaded using paint, you can always come back in with your marker and add a little bit more detail as well. I hope that you have enjoyed it. I can't wait to see them if you're able to share with me. And thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. I hope to see you again.